Joyous Christmas Day to you. I'm Lloyd Ogilvy from the historic First Presbyterian Church of Hollywood, inviting you to a celebration of Christ's birth so long ago in Bethlehem and today in our hearts. Thank you for inviting us into your home for a joyous celebration of the heart of Christmas. The heart of Christmas is the heart. God's heart of love and forgiveness revealed in Christ our Lord and our hearts open to receive him. And then all of our hearts blended together with your heart as we experience peace together. Christmas morning is filled with joy and excitement and expectation for children and also for the children inside of all of our hearts. And that's why I've asked these young people to join me together this morning as we light the Advent wreath as one of the great customs of Christmas. The Advent wreath came from a custom of the early Christians. They used to put wreaths on their doors because a wreath was a symbol of victory, and Jesus Christ was their victory over sin and death and fear. And so they wanted all the world to know that in Christ they had victory. And then in Germany, many centuries later, the Christians went out into the forest and they gathered uh, uh, pine branches and twined them together and made wreaths of them. And then on the wreaths, they placed red candles, one for each of the four Sundays of Advent. And they thought of the four things that Jesus Christ had made possible for them, things like love and peace and joy and hope. And then at the center was placed the Christ candle. That represented Jesus Christ who made all the rest possible. And the Christ candle was to be lighted on Christmas Day. Would you help me light the Christ candle today as we celebrate Christmas morning? Light the candle for us. And as the children do that, think of the words of the old carol, Oh, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for thee. And now the children are going to help me give you a very special Christmas morning blessing. Jesus loves you. Let him be born in your heart. Joyous Christmas to you. Joyous Christmas to you. Joyous Christmas to you. If you could ask Jesus Christ, for one gift, what would that gift be? Yes? His love. His love, I would agree. Yes. His peace. His peace, yes. His affection. His affection, yes. And a happy life. A happy life, yes. Everlasting life. Everlasting life, yes. Everlasting life. Oh, you had the same one too, did you? Yes. To be with Jesus forever. To be with Jesus forever. Well, if that's what we want him to give us, and he gave it to us, we'd have to sing glory hallelujah, wouldn't we? Would you sing it for us? God bless you. And now let us pray. Blessed living Lord Jesus, on this glorious Christmas morning, we receive you. We offer to you the one gift that we have to give, our hearts. Come, be born in us, so that we might know you and love you and be channels of your love and grace to the people around us. In your holy name we pray, amen. And now hear the glorious Christmas story as recorded by Luke in chapter 2, verses 4 to 14. And Joseph went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, 
an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will to men. All during the days of preparation for Christmas, we've been asked the question, well, what do you want for Christmas? And now, for many of you who have opened your gifts this Christmas morning, the question is, did you get what you wanted? In our family, we love catalogs, and all through the year we go through the catalogs and give suggestions to the members of the family. We'd say, now that's something I'd like for Christmas. And the other members of the family put that away in their minds, and then on Christmas morning, we open our gifts, and the very things that we've asked for throughout the year are provided as wonderful gifts of love. It's wonderful when you know what a person wants, and then you can give that person that want. But a deeper question is, what do you need for Christmas? When I was a boy at the last days of the Depression, that was the way the question was worded. What do you need? Because there were no luxuries, need was more important than wants. And our parents would suggest the things that we needed, and then if we asked for what we needed, that was provided as Christmas gifts. I believe that Jesus Christ asked us a question this morning. What do you really need? That's the question that he asked of blind Bartimaeus on the road there. He said, what do you want me to do for you? That's really the Christmas question. Blind Bartimaeus needed his sight, and so do we. We need to be able to see God as he is, God as he's revealed himself in Jesus Christ, ourselves as we are, and then other people as they are. We really need Christmas eyes. The greatest gift of Jesus Christ is the gift of peace. When he comes into our hearts, there is a peace that abides there. It is his peace. A true Christmas is an experience of peace. You know that you will have experienced Christmas if there is a deep, abiding peace in your heart. The first gift is an open and receptive heart to receive his peace. Wonderful thing, when the angels appeared to those shepherds, they said, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. That really meant peace among men with whom God is pleased. What that means to us this morning, this glorious Christmas morning, is that God is pleased with us. In a sense, it means God loves us just as we are. I tell you, you are loved. God came to give peace because he knew that that was the greatest gift the world needed. Jeremiah said, they have healed the wound of my people, lightly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. And Jesus came to be that peace. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus Christ gives us the peace of his own spirit dwelling in us. Secondly, it's the peace of a forgiven and a forgiving heart. Again and again, Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go in peace. In Hebrew, shalom meant salvation, the uh, forgiveness of sin, the protection of God, total well-being. 
And that's what the Lord gives us today. But it's only as we experience the forgiveness that Christ came to give. So on this Christmas morning, we must focus not only the crash, but also the cross. And together we see why he came and what he did. In Jesus Christ, there is forgiveness for all that we've said or done. And the test that we've received his forgiveness this Christmas morning is that we are forgiving people to those around us. Who in your life needs to be forgiven? Have you experienced it? Have you given it? Paul said, for it pleased the Father that in him the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him were there things on earth or things in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. We know that we've received that when today we can forgive anything that's been said or done to us by any other person that's hurt and needs to be forgiven. Make that the goal of your Christmas day, to be a forgiven and forgiving person. But the other result of peace is that we become people in whom the Spirit lives and then we can surrender our hearts to the Lord. Peace is a surrendered and a willing heart. Van Dyke put it this way, with eager heart and will on fire, I sought to win my great desire. Peace shall be mine, said I, but life grew bitter in the endless strife. My soul was weary and my pride was wounded deep. To heaven I cried, God give me peace or I must die. The dumb stars glittered, no reply. Broken at last, I bowed my head. Forgetting all myself, I said, whatever comes, thy will be done. And in that moment, peace was won. You see, peace will be yours this Christmas morning if you can surrender your heart to him. But also, peace is the result of a guided, expectant heart. Paul said, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. The word rule means an umpire. Allow the indwelling Christ to umpire in your heart, sorting out what's right and what's wrong, what you should do and what you shouldn't do. We have real peace when we trust the future to him. Do you have that this Christmas morning? Did Christ come in vain as far as you are concerned? Or have you received him? Isaiah said, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Longfellow saw the difference between the world and his own heart. And he said, I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat, peace on earth, good will to men. And in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth, goodwill to men. Do you hear the bells? They're ringing for you. Christ has come for you. And when you receive him in your heart, then you can say, peace, peace, I know it. Christ, thank you. And so the peace of Christ is a filled and overflowing heart. And so we can pray to the Lord, inviting him in and telling him that we believe in him. Say this prayer in your heart on this glorious Christmas morning. Blessed Lord Jesus, through all the ages the same, healing for sorrow, sin, and shame, help for the helpless and sight for the blind, healing for body and soul and mind. You whom we follow are still the same, with blessings for all who will to claim. But how often we miss your healing touch by thinking we dare not expect too much. 
exalted and given a name above every name, releasing power for us to claim. This Christmas day, we accept your healing touch, knowing we can never expect too much.